our viewers want to know in terms of being an autism dad and an autism grandpa, I can't imagine how different it is now than when your son was first diagnosed. And of course, we're talking about your half brother, Matt. Yeah. Uh, Charlie. Charlie. And how old is Charlie now? 26. 26. Well, I have a, uh, 27 in a month. Wow. That's amazing. So when did you first know that something was different about Charlie? Oh, uh, from, from birth, uh, but I thought it was wonderful. Uh, so you <laughs> I mean, appreciated those differences. He had the autism qualities that I admire. Oh. Uh, and uh, whereas, I mean, he every nursery school he'd go to, he'd climb every tree and he'd, he'd jump across this or that. He was, he was always driving them nuts because he was running and jumping and, and uh, flying through the air. And, the Energizer Bunny. Yeah, yeah, it was. We call that busy pants yeah. in my house. Yeah. Busy, yeah. busy pants. Yeah. Uh, so he had a lot to do. And, it, it, you know, I, I really... Uh, it took me years to become convinced that he was autistic. I just thought he was special. Yeah. Well, he is special. And he's special. still special. Yeah. And so what year was it when you really understood that he was on the spectrum? Do you, can you remember? I, like, was I it the 80s, say, 90s? There, there was no definitive. Okay. We, I got custody of him with my maid at the time, mm -hmm. uh, who I later married. And she did a great job in in raising him, in you know, bearing down. Uh, and even when we had joint visitation, uh, when he'd come to me, I'd work on him on on uh, uh, reading, and she would work with him on. Uh, I taught him phonics, okay. and she would work with him on math, working with exercises in the car. And it's why he kept alive and had a, a brain pool to finally go into school regularly and compete with his peers. Um, he's just special. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, he went to California Poly and uh, did a very nice job there, got a wonderful education there. I would have gone to California Poly High if they thought it would over overtax him too much. So we sent him to another school, which we didn't like. And finally, we sent him off to well, Chicago, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he did okay there. Uh, the It used to be the... Uh, the one who created the term refrigerator mothers. Right. Uh, what the hell was his name? And of course, I can't think of the name either. Yeah. Matt, help us. You know who we're talking no, about? No, I can't. I can't remember the name. Uh, but um, um, I'll come up with it in a minute. But, it was, but I know it was who you're a, talking about. It was about. adjacent to the University of Chicago. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, it was affiliated. Yeah, and he he did okay there. And then after several years there, uh, he he went as far as he could, and then we we brought him home and. Uh, Canner. By that, by that time, yeah. huh? Leo Canner. Leo Canner. That's right. No, that's no, that's the one who 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 uh, created or or de delineated autism uh, uh, Aspergers. Okay. Uh, Well, that's okay. We were talking about he went to Chicago and he did okay for a while. I'll come up with a name for the guy who came I'll, up with refrigerator I'll, 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 Maybe you'll understand it better if you'll if you'll. Uh, if I may quote my spouse at the time, yes. Cindy, who said, he, he doesn't suffer from autism, he suffers from asnerism. Ah. How true is that? Mm. How true is that? Mm. <laughs> there is an element of me in that, I guess. Well, I, you know, I, I think we can all relate to something about being on the spectrum, right? I always, I, I, I notice the things that I am, and I wonder, is that, is my child have those things, or is that uh, autism spectrum? Mm. Do, don't you? Oh, I look back all the time, and I think about that, and, and certainly there are aspects of, of my personality right now that I think are somewhere in there. Yeah, I think we're all a little on the spectrum. So let's move forward in time. Then you have grandchildren, multiple grandchildren, and the moment comes when you watch your son going through this with a child who gets diagnosed. How did, that, how did you feel about that? 
Well, I then began to wonder, it must be asnerism. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, my, my son was, was um, uh, less lucky in a way than, than I because his son was not as high on the spectrum as my son was. And I realized he'd have a much harder job, and he would, he would. But I saw him so filled with love and caring and tenderness, far more than I could have mustered, that uh, I was reassured that the kid was certainly uh, going to make it. Yeah. And he has. Yeah. He's he's come along beautifully. Yeah. I heard him talking about how he had a meltdown at the game. I didn't see that. I didn't even hear him call or boo at the Dodgers. But, <laughs> you were into your popcorn. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Grandpa excuses some things. I think so. And uh, as all Grandpas should. Or uh, shrug off.